the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. How are you? Good? Anybody lost those five pounds yet? No? <laughs> so there's a saying. The saying goes, Always preach the gospel, but only when necessary, use words. I kind of disagree with this saying. This saying, I think, is, is trying to emphasize, emphasize the importance of doing and not just saying. However, today, Jesus makes it very clear how important it is to not just do and not just be a good person or not just act on your Christianity, but he says something in the gospel very important. He says to preach good news. To preach good news. I think as Catholics and as Christians, we can get very comfortable and we kind of downplay the power of our word. We downplay the power of our word and the power that our word can have on other people's lives. You know, we kind of just think to ourselves, well, preaching good words, preaching God's word, well, that's, you know, for the priests. That's for the nuns. It's not really for me. I'm not much of a preacher. And we kind of just leave that in the back of our heads like, I won't even consider that. That's not even my job. However, if we really understand today's gospel, Jesus, he comes from 40 days of being in the desert, he opens up the scriptures, and he finds the place of the prophet Isaiah, where the prophet Isaiah is speaking about who the Messiah is and what the Messiah is going to do. And he reads it, and it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Well, we know that Jesus, before he goes into the desert, he gets baptized, which is what we celebrated on Friday. Jesus receives the power from his Father, to go into the whole entire world and to preach the good news that the Messiah is here and that he's come to save the world. He receives the Spirit, and the Spirit gives him the power not just to preach, but to give sight to the blind, to release those who are in captivity, to give them freedom. And he says, this is, this is what he is. This is who he is. Okay, great. That's Jesus. But we forget that all of us have also been baptized. And a part of our baptism, a big part of our baptism, and living out my baptismal promise, is to preach. To do exactly what Jesus did. That all of us have the ability, in some ways, we have the ability to act just like Jesus. Because guess what, guys? The same spirit that came upon Jesus, that was in Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus and the Father is also in you. He's also in me. The same Spirit that raised Lazarus from the dead, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same Spirit that opened the eyes of the blind, the same Spirit who spoke through Jesus' mouth to proclaim is also in us. I think a part of us believes, like, I don't know, Father, like, you know, I don't know if I'm capable. I don't know if I'm able. Today, in, in the first reading, we hear about Moses, and God comes to Moses, and he says to Moses, Moses, go and preach. Go and speak to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let all of the Jews go free. And he's like, well, God, you know, who am I? Actually, and he continues, and he actually says, God, um, I, uh, I have a stutter, so I'm not capable. I'm not able to go and preach. He gives excuses why, why he's not capable. And God says, just go and I'll be with you. Just go and I'll be with you. Many of us, we look at ourselves and we think to ourselves, well, of course, I don't have what it takes. And guess what? We're right. We don't have what it takes. We don't have what it takes to do God's work, but God does. And that's why he gives us his spirit. That's why he's given you his spirit. He's given me his spirit in baptism. 
And so we need to remember that our words have power. Think about, think about um, the things that you still think about that people have said to you that hurt you for so many years. There's people that remember what somebody said to them from 45 years ago, 60 years ago. They still can remember the word and the power of that person's word and it's still eating them alive today. The power of the word. That's how powerful our words are. Our words can either kill or they can bring to life. And God is calling all of us to use our words, not just to do good things. A lot of people do nice things, guys. There's a lot of good people in the world, to, world today that do wonderful things. There's non-Christians that do better things than Christians do. But people don't turn to Jesus because somebody did something nice for them. People turn to Jesus because somebody speaks about Jesus to them. Are we speaking about Jesus to our neighbor? Do we realize the power that we have to bring life to somebody, to a, to a complete stranger, or even to our own family, family members? Um, just recently, a friend told me that she was, at, uh, she was at the doctor's office last week, and she said, you know, she was, you know, she walked in, and the, the, the nurse at the, at the front started talking to her, and she was like, well, you know, welcome to Dr. So-and-so, and, you know, today we're going to, you know, take your blood, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that test on you, and my friend just looks at her, and she just like, this, the, the, the nurse is saying, like, we're going to take your blood, and she looks at her, and she says, do you know who St. Rita is? <laughs> and she's like, excuse me? She's like, do you know who St. Rita is? And she's like, um, you know, I'm actually named after St. Rita. And all my life, I've wanted to know who St. Rita is. And I've been telling myself, I need to get to know St. Rita. I need to go and learn about her. And she says, here you go. And she pulls out a little booklet about St. Rita's life. And she hands it to her and she says, you know, I just got a sense that St. Rita really wants to get to know you and you to get to know her. She wants to help you get closer to God because I get a sense that you really want to know who God is and he wants to know you too. And this girl's just standing there and she just starts sobbing, sobbing. And she's like, you just changed my life. And she just starts talking to her about Jesus and how much Jesus loves her. And she just start, starts speaking things into her life. And she's like, who are you? You have to go and get your blood drawn. <laughs> and this girl is, this is my friend. She's, she's not a priest, obviously. Just an ordinary girl. But she's listening to God. And she wants to be used by God because she believes that God wants to use her. She believes that God has given her the same power to, to speak about God. Now, there's a lot of people that tell me, Father, I don't like when people preach to me. Don't preach to me. People even say this. They get mad at you when you preach. Like, don't preach to me. I don't need you to, don't talk to me about God. You go talk about God to yourself. Go fix yourself. Are we those defensive people? Are we those defensive people that don't want to hear the truth? Are we those defensive people that are too proud to hear God speak to us? Do we think that we have it all together? Like, I don't need anybody to tell me. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still reading about Jesus. I, every day I pick up a book and I'm learning something about God. I still listen to homilies of other priests. I'm still in need to be fed and to be taught and to be enlightened, to make my mind open because I'm ignorant and I'm prideful and I'm dumb and I can say that and I'm, I'm okay with saying that. I'm not defensive about it. I recognize my need for God to speak to me, to teach me, to show me, to guide me. But many of us, we're too defensive. We're too proud. We don't want to learn. We don't want to be taught. And so, just like those people in the gospel today, when Jesus says, hey guys, I'm the Messiah, they're like, you know what? You got to go. And they want to throw him off the cliff. Because hearing the truth can be too painful. But guess what, guys? That should not stop us from receiving the truth and should never stop us from speaking the truth. 
Now, this is very important. Many people like to preach, but they're preaching from a bad place. They're preaching from a place that they're just trying to act like they're better than you, and they're just trying to make you feel very little about yourself. I know how that feels, and it doesn't feel good. I don't like that feeling of like somebody preaching to me, and they're coming off like, you know what, I know better than you, and I'm about to school you in my Jesus stuff. You know what, I don't like that feeling either. And we shouldn't be that way. Oftentimes we use our words and we try to preach to other people because we do think that we're better than them. And guess what? That person, they feel it too. And they know. They're like, you know what? You're off. Something's off about you. (laughs) You're preaching about Jesus, but something's off about you. So when we preach, my brothers and sisters, we got to preach from a place of love. We've got to preach from a, a tap into the love that God has And pour that love upon that person. It's because love is what changes people. Not yelling at them. Not embarrassing them. Preaching love is what changes people's hearts. Telling them a simple thing like, God loves you. Change that girl's life at the doctor's office. (laughs) Are we ready? Do we want to be used by God? Do we want to be God's mouthpiece? To speak life into people. Today, I really want you guys to listen. If somebody has come to your mind that you really haven't spoken to in a really long time, but they keep coming to your mind, you know when that happens? There's somebody, just a random person, you're like, I haven't talked to you in, I don't know, months, years. Why does this person keep coming to me? More than likely, that's the Holy Spirit nudging you to say, You know what? Check in with that person and speak a word to that person. Tell them you're praying for them. Tell them God loves them. Preach. Be bold. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Preach. Speak. We're too shy. We're not convicted. We don't believe enough. If we only knew how powerful God's word is, We'd be shouting from the rooftops. We'd be running in the streets. Be a fool. Be a fool for Jesus. Who cares? You know, the second reading said, St. Paul said, you know what? You're going to preach, and if you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to be persecuted. Who cares? If they don't like it, somebody doesn't like it, you know what? Shake the dust off your feet and keep walking. And keep preaching. Like St. Francis was preaching to the animals because nobody wanted to speak to him because his heart was on fire. He just wanted to talk about God. He was so in love with Jesus, he just wanted to talk about Jesus. Guys, the same spirit is in all of us. Stir up that same Holy Spirit. Tell the Holy Spirit you're ready to speak, you're ready to preach. And be open. Listen. When you're at a restaurant, look around the restaurant and let the Holy Spirit tell you who needs you to speak. Maybe the, person, maybe the person that's waiting on you, pull out a little holy card, pull out a rosary and say, you know what? Here's a rosary. Here's a cross. I just want you to know God loves you. That's it. Can I pray for you? Is there anything that you need prayer for? 99.9% of the time, somebody is going to tell you, yes, I'll take the prayer. I will take the prayer. But are we doing that? Are we being God's tools Be a tool for Jesus. You know, I say, oh, that person's a tool. Well, you know what? Yeah, we are tools, and we're tools for Christ. Let's open up our mouths. Let's proclaim the word of God. And the world and the people around us will really truly be on fire. That that fire will literally become contagious. And that person will receive that fire, and then they're going to want to give that fire. And little by little, the world will know who Jesus is with us and through us. Amen? Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit.